What I was talking about at Folio yesterday was mainly material from my most recent book about rest and its role in the lives of, of super creative and productive people. Why it is that we tend to undervalue rest, how we can do it better, and what benefit we can get from it. The project that I'm working on now is looking at organizations that are putting these insights into practice. And in particular, looking at companies, startups in software, advertising, or other fields that are moving to four-day weeks or to other kinds of shorter working periods without cutting, or cutting salaries or profitability. Now, you know, we have, I think, since at least the Industrial Revolution, thought about work time in very kind of mechanical and in some ways simple sorts of ways. The factory was, among other things, a place that turned time from something that followed the rhythms of nature to a space whose time followed the rhythms of machines and economies. One of the features of factory time was that um, time inside the factory ignored sort of the rules that existed outside the factory. An enclosed, controlled space in which you worked to the pace of the machine. You tended to work for certain periods of time as opposed to working in order to complete projects. And you did this day in, day out, um, originally for seven days and then sort of with the rise of union movements, six days and eventually five. But this idea of time within the workspace, time within the factory being undifferentiated, being, or, uh, being set by clocks rather than projects, followed us into office work and often service work. So that what we ended up with was a kind of vision of the workday as an undifferentiated whole. So the idea with most kinds of work today is that you know, it, it happens from 9 to 5, let's say. Um, every moment of the day, every hour is more or less equal to every other hour. And then, if you want to do more work, you stretch these out come in earlier, work later, what have you. But in creative work, it's often the case that these kinds of measures are very difficult to come up with. And so time tends to become a substitute for other measures of productivity. So for all of these reasons, we live in a world in which work time is treated as essentially the same, no matter, or throughout the day. It's treated as extendable, and it's very difficult to construct boundaries that were of around, were of around that work. Now, in my last book my, about rest, I talked about the role that rest plays in the lives of Nobel Prize winners, famous writers, artists, painters, even politicians and generals. And one of the things that I found was that, you know, these are incredibly dedicated, ambitious people, right? People who often are working in very competitive fields, you know, scientists who are racing to make discoveries before, or their, or before their colleagues do, um, pol uh, generals who are trying to win wars. And these are people who are very devoted to their work who are very ambitious. There are people who often will, work, who will sort of organize their entire lives around their work. But when you dive into their daily schedules, you see something very interesting, which is that they don't organize their entire day around working. Rather, people like Albert Einstein or Charles Darwin or Stephen King or Toni Morrison, these are people who often would, would arrange their daily schedules so that they worked not for very long hours, but for brief intensive periods. So 
their, calendar, their daily schedule tended to look like this. So rather than having long periods where they would be working, um, their work would be concentrated into periods of about four, about four hours, where they would work or, uh, often starting fairly early in the morning, work very intensively, and then have an equally long period of deliberate rest. So they would do things like go on long walks, exercise, do other kinds of things that are apparently not productive, but actually turn out to be really valuable for their creative lives. Because it turns out that we have a great capacity to sort of solve problems unconsciously. Or to, and when we allow our creative subconscious time to work on problems that have occupied our effort, they're often able to make progress on them sometimes on problems that, uh, that have eluded our conscious solution. Another thing that they do is um, they are, like the people I talk about in rest, a lot more conscious about constructing time during the day for or to focus dedicated work. Now what this means usually is um, two things. And number one, Having a period in the day when everybody has the freedom to ignore email, Slack, whatever, you don't have to answer the phone, um, you're generally, or if you are discouraged from interrupting other people unless it's, uh, unless it's a real emergency. The second thing that you do is um, cut meetings down to an absolute minimum. So, stand, you know, the you know, the weekly team meeting that goes for an hour every Monday morning is, you know, if, it's, if it exists, um, it's five minutes, you stand up, and then you go off and do other things. 